If you're dealing with IBS, gut dysbiosis, leaky gut, or challenging gut overgrowths, I have some important information for you today. All of these gut issues can cause a lot of uncomfortable symptoms like gas, bloating, diarrhea, where you're having to run your life around where the bathrooms are, stomach upset, uh, debilitating symptoms even with C. difficile. And all of these can make your life quite miserable. But did you know there's a simple way you can get relief from these gut symptoms? So in today's video, I want to discuss immunoglobulins. What are they? And how do they reduce gut inflammation and symptoms? So this video is educational today and it's not intended to be medical advice. So make sure you talk to your doctor if you have any questions. First of all, as a microbiologist, I always love talking about the gut microbiome and how complex your gut microbiome is. It's, it's full of trillions of different types of microbes from bacteria to yeast and fungus and viruses. And I like to think of it as like a rainforest. It's full of little plants, shrubs, big trees, insects, animals. There's all different kinds. It's a it's all its own ecosystem. Your gut microbiome is a complex community. It's diverse. There are trillions of microbes and thousands of different species of microbes in your gut. Most of them are good. Some of them are neutral or not so good, but it's all a balance held in check by your good microorganisms, your good probiotic bacteria, as you might say. So when you have a gut dysbiosis, that means an imbalance of good to bad bacteria in your gut microbiome. You might have an overgrowth of a particular pathogen like C. difficile infections. And when that kind of dysbiosis, that imbalance is happening, those bad bacteria and microbes, they create a bunch of toxins that are very inflammatory inside of the gut. And that ties into those symptoms that you can experience that aren't so uh, easy to deal with. And these toxins also contribute to the immune system overactivating in your gut. Um, your GI system is where the majority of your immune system cells are. It's like the interface between uh, your interior environments and the outside world, which comes in through your GI system. And when these toxins and these pathogens are there, the immune system can get overactivated and that can affect uh, the cell lining of your intestine. Uh, there's actually gaps between your, your cells of your intestines that will enlarge and allow uh, small pieces and parts of bacteria and toxins into your bloodstream. That's often called a leaky gut. And also that immune cell activation in C. difficile can bring an influx of water into the intestines causing the diarrhea. So what are those immunoglobulins I mentioned? Well, immunoglobulins are actually cells produced by the immune system and uh, immune cells will go, they'll find a pathogen and they will create an antibody, which is an immunoglobulin. They'll tag that pathogen with it so other immune cells can come by and dispatch it to destroy it, remove it, whatever they need to do. So immunoglobulins are proteins, antibodies made by the immune system. Now today I want to talk about serum-derived bovine immunoglobulins, or SBIs. Now these immunoglobulins are taken from cow serum. So cows have a very robust immune system, and as they go through their life, they're exposed uh, to different kinds of pathogens. It could be E. coli, could be molds, it could be other negative bacteria or microbes, and their immune system will create antibodies against those different microbes. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a bacteria, a virus, a mold, a yeast, the immune system will tag those negative microbes uh, so the immune system can take them out <laughs> to dispatch them. Basically, it binds and neutralizes those pathogens, those negative microbes, so they are removed from the cow. 
So when people take these SBIs, these immunoglobulins, by mouth, they go into the intestinal system, they bind and neutralize all those pathogens, all those toxins that are creating all that irritation and inflammation in the gut. They're neutralized and removed from the system. And that's what causes that symptom relief. So the thing I like about these SBIs is there's been over 45 human clinical studies on how these SBIs improve gut symptoms. They reduce inflammation, they improve GI function, they provide all around gut symptom relief. Many of the human clinical studies done on these SBIs included IBS irritable bowel studies. And in those studies, participants found they had reduced abdominal discomfort, uh, better gas, bloating, urgencies, better um, symptom duration, their stools were better, meaning the diarrhea improved. And all across the board, their quality of life scores improved. So just these SBIs, taking them, those SBIs going in and binding those toxins, improve those with IBS. Another thing they discovered with, the, with these SBIs is that once these immunoglobulins bind to those toxins or negative microbes, it keeps them in the gut so they're not allowed to go through those tight junctions in the intestinal wall and into the bloodstream because once those microbial pieces and parts get into the bloodstream, it causes systemic infl inflammation that's tied to autoimmune diseases because now your immune system has to fight all these things that should be in your GI tract that keep exiting and coming into your bloodstream. So for those with leaky gut, uh, lipopolysaccharides, LPS, that's parts of uh, gram-negative bacteria, when they die, those end up going into the bloodstream. Well, these uh, immunoglobulins also grab those LPS uh, pieces and keep them, uh, help prevent them from going into the bloodstream through the intestinal wall. So these immunoglobulins help improve leaky gut in addition to IBS and all these other kinds of gut discomfort, uh, gut symptoms related to dysbiosis and overgrowths. These immunoglobulins have also been found to improve the mucus layer inside of your intestines. There's supposed to be a good layer of mucus that's protective, so if you do have any overgrowth or any toxins, it's not immediately irritating to the lining of the, the cell wall. So that's another benefit is that uh, the immunoglobulins help boost that mucus layer, giving you more of a protection from those agents. These immunoglobulins have also been found to increase short-chain fatty acids. And those normally are produced from uh, various probiotic strains, healthy probiotics. They're um, the short chain fatty acids, and those are tied to a decrease of inflammation. So that's probably another aspect of why these immunoglobulins just reduce the inflammation inside of the GI system. And the short chain fatty acids that they improve are the butyrate, acetate, and, propi and propionate. And having an increase of those short chain fatty acids improves colitis and IBS. There's a direct correlation there. And with all these uh, human clinical studies, they found that the immunoglobulins are very safe. And another benefit is they actually improve some of your healthy bacteria, including the bifidobacteria species, which is a marker of gut health. So it's great that you can take something by mouth, it goes in, it grabs up the toxins, it grabs up certain pathogenic species, and it doesn't harm your healthy bacteria at the same time as reducing those pathogens and helping your symptoms. And another thing these immunoglobulins were shown to do was improve populations of bifidobacteria and they help increase the diversity of the gut microbiome. So both of those are healthy indicators that that's having a positive effect and those are positive indicators of a good gut microbiome. 
you might be asking yourself, well, what exactly do all these immunoglobulins bind to? And that's a great question. These uh, specific immunoglobulins, which I'll share uh, a specific product at the end of this video, they have been found to bind specifically to C. difficile toxins A and B, Klebsiella pneumoniae, H. pylori, and that's a common stomach infection, E. coli, Staphylococcus, Salmonella typhimurium, Serratia marcescens, and many more bacterial pathogens. They've also been found to buy, bind to mold toxins and aflatoxins. They bind to lipopolysaccharides, the LPS, which is tied to irritable bowel syndrome and autoimmunity issues. They bind to CDT subunits A and C, which are tied to SIBO infections, which is the small intestinal bowel overgrowth. That's when you have bacteria growing in your small intestine, uh, which you shouldn't normally have many growing there because it's a very harsh environment. They've also been found to bind to yeast and their toxins, including Candida albicans yeast. And they also have not been found to bind to your healthy bacteria, healthy probiotics in your GI system. And they've been found to work with your gut immune system to maintain a balance of healthy organisms to pathogens. So these immunoglobulins can be taken if you're currently on antibiotics or antimicrobial therapies or probiotic therapies to help reestablish the balance in your gut. They go great uh, with any of those types of therapies. Um, you might not even be on those therapies, but you might need extra gut support. Well, they can help you with that too. Uh, the nice thing about these is they don't have any interactions with foods, supplements, or medications, so they won't actually bind or interfere with those. They can be taken with food, but if you have a gut um, overgrowth or an issue with your gut, it's best if you can take them just with water on an empty stomach so they can focus and target what's in your GI system instead of the salad that you just ate for lunch. So these immunoglobulins that have been the subject of over 45 uh, human clinical studies are found in a product called Mega IgG 2000. And this product is very easy to use. It comes in capsules or powder forms. You can mix it with water, drink it, so it just goes right into your uh, intestines to get to work. It has a very mild taste. Uh, it's easy for children to take and adults. Uh, it's great for children over two years old and older. And this is great for anyone wanting to improve their gut conditions to help reduce symptoms. It's great for people who have gut overgrowths, um, SIBO, IBS, um, C. difficile, anything where there's a overgrowth and inflammation, inflammatory process going on uh, with these negative microbes. So Mega IgG 2000, um, I was able to take it just right off the bat at a full dose and I'm a very sensitive person when it comes to supplements, so I was super pleased about that. It's so soothing in my GI system. It makes it feel good and it makes me feel good. If I eat something that's not so good, I'll take it really quick and it'll help bind up microbial toxins. Sometimes produce can have some mold on it so that you may not see, but you might feel it. I wish I would have known about this product when I started Megaspore Biotic. I had um, been in a moldy house for a long time and with that I uh, had a lot of leaky gut going on so when you start a high-powered probiotic and it starts shifting and killing off those pathogens you really feel it and that's why it's such a great product to add with probiotic ther therapies or antimicrobial therapies it's going to make you so much more comfortable when you're reestablishing that proper gut microbiome balance so I can't recommend it enough. Uh, so many people we've recommended it to just absolutely love it. And it's just made life so much easier for them. And I hope it does for you too. So I hope you found today's video helpful. And if you did, please like and subscribe. 
You can also find more information about this product in the description below, and I've also included links to our supplement store where you can find this a specific product. Thanks so much, and thanks for watching.